Clair High School Gymnasium. We're here to see West Mifflin uh, play Upper St. Clair tonight in the finals of our tip-off classic. And we should have the introductions here in, in just a few seconds. Uh, my name is Hank Chesco, and it looks so far like I will be the only announcer here tonight. So you're going to be bored with my, uh, my voice for the whole evening. Uh, and I'll do my best to keep you up to date and keep you entertained uh, with the game. Uh, St. Clair advanced to the finals by virtue of beating South Park uh, by 25 last ladies, night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Upper St. Clair High School for tonight's basketball game featuring the Titans of Westmifflin High School and the Panthers of Upper St. Clair. Now the starting lineup for the visiting Titans. At four, the 6'2 senior, number 32, Mike Rue. that we have the introductions and the national anthem taken care of, let's get back to the business of basketball. As I was saying a few seconds ago, St. Clair advanced to the finals of this round of this tournament by virtue of beating South Park last night by 25 points. Uh, West Mifflin played Peters Township here at 6 yesterday evening, uh, and they had a 22-point victory. Uh, I think both teams will see a little bit more of a challenge today, today than they did yesterday. Uh, earlier, uh, the St. Clair JV team got the better of West Mifflin's JV, 55-25. Props to Brad Midgley in his uh, first role as, a, as the head JV coach. He just took over the team this week, and he is now 1-0 undefeated. Congratulations, Brad. Here we go. We're lined up for the opening tip. Tap controlled by Mindbreeze. McShane sets the offense. Looks like West Mifflin's in a man-to-man -to, -man to open up the game. Now yesterday, early on, St. Clair was very willing to take the three-point shot. Let's see if they're going to open it up tonight. Christian Shea brings it to the top of the circle. He's a freshman starting for St. Clair. St. Clair seems very patient. McShane getting some instructions from Holzer. He's calling the play. Now tonight we see Conwell out front with the ball. Yesterday he was playing with his back to the basket. Mindbreeze goes up strong. Rebound to West Mifflin. Here's the break. West Mifflin's running. There's the first turnover by West Mifflin. They had the ball for about four seconds. Not quite as big a crowd tonight. The student section, uh, maybe they're out still out eating dinner. 
I see maybe 15 or 20 West Mifflin fans. West Mifflin plays out of AAA. We're a quad A school. St. Clair working the ball around on the perimeter. Again, very patient. McShane tries to dribble drive on a penetration. McLean kicks it back out to Christian. Conwell, ooh, he might have got away with a shuffle of his feet there. And I think both teams are still just filling each other out right now. And he didn't get away with it that time. He dragged his back foot. Traveling violation on Christian Shea. Well, let's see what West Mifflin does with this possession. St. Clair matching up man to man. Some token pressure in the backcourt by McShane. Now this is one of the problems St. Clair had last night. Even though they beat South Park, South Park was able to work the ball inside effectively at times. Shot block, Shea took the three pointer. And it's off Shea's foot, no. St. Clair retains possession. Again, St. Clair had a long possession on the first, the first two times they had the ball, but nothing came of it. West Mifflin shot pretty quickly. Junior Dave McLean inbounds the ball to Conwell. Conwell looking to do something, but gives it back up. Mindbridge setting things up at the top of the key. McLean having a little bit of trouble controlling the ball there. Again, I think St. Clair is seeing a little bit better of a team tonight than they did last night. Shea into Conwell. Conwell with his back to the basket. Mindbridge top of the key. Three-pointer off the back rim. Rebound out. West Mifflin looking to run. Uh, they pull it back out and slow it down. Working it down on the baseline and another turnover. So that's two turnovers and three possessions for West Mifflin. Uh, St. Clair, the hallmark of the St. Clair team last year was defense. And it looks like they're focusing on that again this year. Three-pointer by Mindbreeze. Nothing but the bottom of the net. St. Clair draws first blood. Now, just about everyone on the St. Clair team can shoot, and they're going to have to. They're a little undersized for a uh, quad A school, with the tallest man being uh, Steve Mindbrees on the varsity. Number 23 from inside the key, two points. Make that score three to two. Five, as the clock winds to five, 4.52, McShane drives, dishes to Conwell, and one. Very nice, and that all started with, with McShane's penetration into the key. And a very nice, now, now there's, a, there's a couple of players that spent the entire fall playing together in football, and it looks like their teamwork uh, is carrying over into the basketball season. Timeout, 30 second timeout for West Mifflin. Uh, while we've got a break in action, I've got to also send a shout out to my alma mater. Uh, the Bucknell Bison beat DePaul today. That's the second Big East team uh, that they've taken down. They've got Villanova coming into the Soika Pavilion later next week, which will, should be a, the first time a ranked team has played in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. So again, uh, good luck to Pat Flannery, uh, an alumnus that's been there for 27 years coaching, went to school with Pat, and I hope things work out for the Bisons this week. Mark your calendars now. January 2nd, the Bison will be on, on cable playing Duke at, at, uh, at Durham. Durham, North Carolina will be the first time they've played Duke. Uh, I know they want to step up the program, but I think they're going just a little bit too far with Duke. But again, uh, good luck out there to Pat Flannery. Uh, Conwell stepping to the line. We're going to complete the, complete the old-fashioned three-point play. And as the fans say whoosh, uh, that makes it 6-2. to two. 4.44 to go in that quarter. McShane applying some pressure. Again, West Mifflin hasn't been patient when they've had the ball. They, they're going to try to work it inside. They have a little bit of a height advantage. Um, but they're trying to do it off the dribble drive. You know, they're, they're, they're and as I look around the court, they seem to have an inch or two at just about every, every spot. Oh, a nice rejection by Mindbreeze. Oh, it looks like a foul. Uh, and again, that St. Clair defense was cutting off the passing lanes. 
and a foul is on number 20. Uh, no, it's on 15, excuse me. And Steve Meinbris, his first personal foul. Ball's inbounded over to the corner. Started his drive and decided to pull it back out. Again, St. Clair staying in the man-to-man. Saunders looking to pass, passes it over to Rue. Back to Saunders. Uh, that's Chris Giles now. Again, doesn't appear that West Mifflin is looking to take any shots. That's a traveling violation. Again, that tough defense, uh, St. Clair. That's the fourth West Mifflin turnover in the first three minutes of the game. First five minutes of the game, excuse me. McLean bringing the ball up. Looks like he's going to run the point on this possession. Over to Conwell. McShane, top of the key. Penetrates, drives, dishes, turnover. Here comes West Mifflin. And they turn the ball right back over. That's five turnovers for West Mifflin. They need to do a better job protecting the ball. As does Dave McLean on that play. Uh, might have been a foul there. The fans wanted to call. Mindbreeze drives, dishes it in the corner to McShane. McShane back to Mindbreeze. And he's going to slow it down. Try to run a two-man play. Nice penetration. Dane goes up with the left hand. Uh, rebound out to West Mifflin. West Mifflin on the break. Kick it out. Oh, there's a jump shot. And it's good. Makes the score 6-4. to four. 2.41 to go in the quarter. St. Clair nursing a two-point lead. We've got a couple players looking to check in. Well, the next time we have a stoppage, we'll bring those guys, uh, we'll bring those guys in. Uh, Mine Reese with the, with the ball out of the 35 foot line. Oh, and there was a trip, a little push. Uh, that should just be a possession. Let's see who's coming in. We've got Adam Anderson checking in, and we've got Tom Polsheko checking in as well. And for uh, West Mifflin, we've got number 33, Demetrius Snow, checking in. Uh, Conwell and McLean take a seat for a few. Let's see what kind of a set play we have. Now, McShane, McShane drives, and he was, ooh. Nice penetration, drew the foul, go to the line shooting two. Two sixteen to go, St. Clair with a two point lead. That's the third team foul on West Mifflin. Uh, not a lot of fouling so far tonight. First one, front rim, no good. Right to Anderson. Adam always seems to be in the right place, even if the rebound doesn't matter this time. Let's see if Pat can make the second one. Uh, front rim, nice rebound by Mind Breeze. Puts it right back and in. Makes the score 8 4, St. Clair. 2 10 to go in the half. Again, a little bit of backcourt pressure. Uh, Adam tried to draw the offensive. Uh, Three-pointer is no good. Here come, the, here come the Panthers. Oh, a nice defensive play from behind. And it's out on West Mifflin. Panther ball. The student section has some sort of a cheer going. Quack, quack, quack said the duck. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Uh, ball is inbound to Pat McShane. Looking to set the offense. Into Mindbreeze. Mindbreeze spins. Drives. Two points. 10-4 St. Clair. Clock winds to 142. Again, McShane has been applying pressure in the backcourt. At least some token pressure just about every possession. West Mifflin seems to be a little confused on offense. They can't get into any kind of rhythm at all. It's all a lot of one-man basketball. Ball's tapped, Mindbreeze gets it. Anderson on the break. Loses his footing off the back rim. Here comes West Mifflin. St. Clair back. Nice transition game. Three-pointer. Back rim. Anderson rebound. They cut off the... He was looking to make an outlet pass to McShane. It was cut off nicely. Pat starts the offense up.
Meinbries for three. Front rim, Anderson a rebound. You're going to see when Adams in there, he will be around the ball on every offensive rebound. He has a nose for the basketball. He just knows how to get position. He uses his body very, very well. Strong young man. St. Clair will be inbounding the ball with 51.3 seconds to go in the half. We've got a couple of substitutions coming in for, uh, for West Mifflin. Number 10, Dustin Dean makes his first appearance. Uh, out to mine, Brees. Anderson, he's looking at a three, and he decides to get it over to Pat. Oh, a little no, good no call, three-pointer. St. Clair can't get the threes to drop tonight. Mine Breeze had a, two good looks at the basket. West Mifflin, I'm guessing they're going to hold for the last, last shot. 36 seconds to go. McShane comes out, pick at the top of the circle. West Mifflin drives. Oh, that looked like clean, but the ref's calling it that he hit him with the body. I think the block was clean, but the hip. Now, that'll be the second foul on Mine Breeze. Uh, yeah, he might uh, might bring Dane back in here now, and some Mind Breeze doesn't pick up a third foul. Mike Rue is a 6'2 senior. His first shot is good. Makes the score at 10-5 St. Clair. 24.3 seconds to go in the half. And as I had suspected, they're going to sit Mindbreeze Breeze down for a while. Don't want to see him pick up his third foul this early in the first half. Second shot. Rue steps to the line. Some noise from the fans to distract him, but it had, oh, it did have an effect. And again, another rebound for Anderson. McShane brings it up the side court. Halls are calling out play four. Let's see what play four is. Shea's been quiet in the first half. He had a real nice game last night against South Park, stepping up and starting as a freshman. McShane sees an opening, dishes it. Shea from the corner, three. Very nice. As at the buzzer, Christian Shea, the freshman, steps up. Well, again, it's 13 to five, end of the first quarter. Just to update you on a couple of items here. There are two players that, uh, that are on the bench today for St. Clair that are nursing injuries. Uh, Nick Shea, Christian's older brother, who's a junior, has a broken nose. They expect him back uh, next week sometime. He'll probably be playing with one of those clear plastic masks for a while. Uh, also uh, in civvies tonight, uh, Mike Cartier. Uh, Mike's uh, resting up from a couple of uh, nagging injuries, and but they expect him back in a, in a week or so. Uh, if you hear me call him Carter, that's what his buddies call him, as in Carter, and not Cartier. So if I if I call him Carter, uh, it's only because I'm calling him by his uh, his nickname. It's not because I don't know his name. Uh, a very good defensive half for St. Clair, or quarter, excuse me. When you only give up five points in a quarter, that's a, that's a good effort. And I think there was something around five or six, uh, five or six turnovers. St. Clair didn't shoot particularly well, uh, but when you play defense like that, you don't need to score a lot of points. Looks like West Mifflin's going back to their, to their starting lineup. They need to generate some offense. They have to find somebody that's going to step up and, and make a shot. Uh, between the turnovers and the bricks, it was a tough first quarter. Uh, let's see, and it looks like uh, Mine Breeze is going to stay on the bench. Anderson is in. Uh, McLean, Shea, Conwell, and McShane round out the, round out the, uh, the five for St. Clair. 24, J.R. Johnson looking to make some penetration. Uh, excuse me, 34, that's Leon Green. In, inside, you know, they've got a height mismatch and they took, they were trying to post up Christian Shea. Nice pass, two. Uh, they showed some patience to work the ball around. 13-7, McShane brings the ball up court, protecting a six point lead. They're trying to clear it out, let him beat his man. Pat has a very quick first step. Nice drop step by Conwell. Couldn't get it to go. McLean for three. Yes. I'm sorry. Christian Shea for three. A couple quick threes by Christian. Extends the lead to 16-7 St. Clair. Clock ticking down at 7-11. Again, a little backcourt back pressure by McShane. Again, very, you know, 
Nice defense away from the ball by St. Clair. Again, a deflection. One of the things you'll hear college coaches talk about now are deflections. It isn't always a turnover, but when you start, uh, start playing good defense, you can get deflections that just disrupts the other team's flow. So even if you don't, turn, even if you don't you know, get them to commit a turnover, you still get, oh, all the way to the backcourt to get it inbounds. Again, another sign of some good defense by St. Clair. McShane matching up on 34, Leon Green. West Mifflin certain, certainly seems to take their time. Uh, pick on McShane. McShane bumps through it. Drive. Poorly advised shot, but uh, West Mifflin maintains control of the ball. Jumper from the corner. I think Conwell got a piece of that ball, and Adam Anderson comes down with it. Christian bringing the ball up court for St. Clair. Over to Anderson. Anderson gets it back into the hands of the point guard to reset the offense. Again, St. Clair looking to clear out... Um, spread out the West Mifflin defense, let McShane drive, as I was saying the last time. Pat has a very quick first step, and can nine times out of ten will beat his man. He can't beat a double team, though. Over to McLean. McLean, oh, almost a backcourt violation. Pat dribbles to the right, over to McLean. McLean into Conwell, playing with his back to the basket. Drop step back out to McLean for the three. Front rim, rebound, West Mifflin. Uh, West Mifflin brings the ball up court, left to right as we're speaking. Again, another deflection on that tough defense. 16-7, St. Clair with a nine-point lead. West Mifflin trying to cut into that. It, interior pass, again, just a little bit of harassment from behind by Adam. Causes yet another West Mifflin turnover. And West Mifflin calls timeout with a score 16-7, 5.33 to go in the second quarter. Again, neither team shooting particularly well right now, but St. Clair has gotten a few more to drop than, than the West Mifflin, uh, West Mifflin Titans. Cheerleaders taking the court, doing a couple of cartwheels to entertain the crowd during the, during the timeout. Doesn't appear that either team will be making any substitutions at this uh, at this timeout, but I think that uh, West Mifflin Scotch has to be telling his guys to uh, somebody's got to step up and make some shots, uh, and and they have to do a little bit better job of protecting the ball as well. Uh, whistle sounded, and both teams should be coming back out on the court. And Panthers will stick with the same lineup that they had in. Uh, it'll be Panther ball. McLean will be inbounding it. Someone needs to come back and, and help him out. Uh, looks like Pat will be coming back and, and bringing the ball up court. West Mifflin has their starting lineup back in. 34, Leon Green putting pressure on, on, on McShane as he crosses the midcourt line. He makes penetration, kicks it out to Conwell. Trying to double team Conwell over to McLean. McLean way cross court pass to Adam. Adam over to Pat. Pat fakes it in. Drive by Conwell. Adam around the ball, but I think they're going to call a, a foul on number 22 from West Mifflin. Seems to have grabbed Adam's arm as they were wrestling for the basketball. Again, as I had said earlier, Adam has a nose for the ball. When the ball goes up on the rim, he's going to be around it. McShane. Had thoughts about a three, decides to drive, dishes to Anderson. Anderson uses his body, backs in. Two points, 18-7. St. Clair extends its lead to 11 points. 23, Chris Giles brings the ball up. Now he's, he hasn't been playing the point. Uh, terrible shot selection. Back rim, offensive rebound goes to West Mifflin. West Mifflin takes a three, 34, and that's the definition of a brick. When it gets stuck on the backboard, that's a brick. Uh, St. Clair ball, possession arrow going our way. McLean inbounds the ball to McShane. Clock winds to 4.38, St. Clair nursing an 11 point lead, 18-7. Looks like Pat's gonna take the air out of the ball a little bit here, see what kind of defense West Mifflin's in. Drives, kicks it back out, Shea, that's his favorite spot. Oh, in and out. Offensive rebound, bouncing around. West Mifflin gains control, and they're on the break. 
Very nice, Patrick. Pat just poked it away. Sinclair on the break over to Anderson. Steps back behind the three-point line. Yes. 21-7. Adam Anderson for three. Now that's, that's a good example of how teams will use the fast break to set up a three. You don't always have to take a layup with that short three. Oh, it looked like he had his foot on the, uh, on the end line, but I guess not. 23, top of the circle. Little Joel penetration drive, three point, back rim. Ball bounces around, McShane controls it. Again, Adam got his hands on it, break to Conwell. Conwell under control. West Mifflin ball. Here come, here come the Titans. Christian playing some defense. Oh, I think we had a shuffle, but we got they got away with one. Dumps the ball over to number 22, Ray Saunders for two, making the score 21-9. 12 point lead for the Panthers. Conwell kicks it back out. McLean for three. Yes. I think you're gonna see the St. Clair team shooting a lot of threes this year. Just about everybody on that team can step up and, and make a long distance shot if they have to. I can't wait to see them play Char Valley myself. That will be a fun game as both teams will be sh shooting a misguided missiles from the parking lot. Uh, again, a third time out of the half for West Mifflin. Score 24-9. I think he needs to get some uh, points on the board before this game gets, gets out of control. That was a 30-second variety. So I don't have to talk too much while the, while, the, while the players are getting instructions from the coach. Uh, looks like, do we have Taylor Everett checking in? Uh, yeah, Holzer's, Coach Holzer is going to his bench. We've got Taylor Everett, number 31, uh, checking in, as well as uh, number 12, uh, Tom Polasheko, staying with McShane and, and Conwell and, and Christian Shea. Uh, West Mifflin's also gone to the bench. It looks like they've brought in uh, a middle linebacker from the football team, Cordero Nesby. He's uh, a little bit more size on the front line than they had before. Say, top of the key. Over to the over to Norsby. Back over to uh, Snow. Snow looking to make a pass, but again, St. Clair cutting off the passing lanes. West Mifflin working the ball around their perimeter. They had a thought about an entry pass. Taylor did a nice job of cutting off the passing lane. Shot from, from the foul line. Uh, Paul Schenko pulls down the rebound. McShane brings the ball up the side court. There's Shea from three. That's his fourth three from that spot today. The young man likes to shoot. I don't know if his brother's gonna get much playing time when he gets healthy the way he's shooting. 26-9 St. Clair, the 17 point lead, 2.22 to go in the half. Now I saw this West Mifflin team play Peters Township last night. Again, there's a deflection. Pat breaks it up. West Mifflin steps on the end line. St. Clair ball. That has to be the 12th turnover for West Mifflin in the half. 26-9 St. Clair, 17-point lead. I don't think you'll see them in any hurry here. Again, they're, they're going to spread out the offense. They're going to their motion. Set over to Taylor. Taylor, get control. Over to Shea. I think they're gonna have to have somebody come out on Shea and not give him that open three-pointer any longer. Uh, poor pass from Dane. Uh, and he gets back on defense, does a nice job of, of blocking the, and again, there's McShane cutting off the passing lane. Here come the Panthers. Conwell, lefty, yes, 28-9. Nice fast break. Now there's, you know, there's your, your guy that's playing center, your, your five man for the team out on the break. Now St. Clair will be able to run with just about anybody this year, but when they play against some taller teams, they're gonna have some tough matchups. 28-9, uh, minute 28 to go in the half. West Mifflin works the ball out to the top of the key, over to the left side. We're gonna beat McShane, number 10 versus number 10. Into the corner. Almost stepped on the end line. And again, as I was saying, West Mifflin looked very strong against Peters Township last night. And, and honestly, I was expecting them to come with a little bit better game uh, than they've shown. Oh, uh, Both Taylor and Dane Conwell were, were defending against... Saunders as he drove the baseline, but the Zebras detected some contact. 
And credit that one to Taylor. Taylor Everett getting some playing time here in the second quarter. Uh, and I believe number three, JT Pion, checked in for the Panthers. So again, Panthers giving their starters a little bit of a breather with, 19, with a 19 point lead, 55 seconds to go and a half. Oh, and they call Pion on the foul. Again, that, that tough defense that McShane almost had another steal. 53.8, that's the first foul on Pion. Four team fouls for the Panthers. Oh, correct that. It wasn't on JT. It was on Christian Shea. Um, that's just his first foul. Five team fouls. Shea, Johnny on the spot, picks up the loose ball as it was bouncing around the top of the key. Uh, Coach Holder shout shouting out some instructions to Pat McShane. I think he's going to hold for the last shot here. Had a thought about driving past his man, but then kicked it back out. Paul Shaco over to Everett. 26 seconds to go. I don't think St. Clair is going to shoot. No. Christian passes it up back out to McShane. 20 seconds to go in the half. Over to Taylor. Taylor back to McShane. McShane. Christian from the other side. Oh, side rim. Nice hustle by Pat. Over to Paul Shaco. Back rim. 2.2 seconds to go. And that's the way the half is going to end. Desperation shot at the buzzer. Again, if you didn't hear the uh, the PA system, St. Clair 28, West Mifflin 9, 19 point lead at the half. And we're going to take a break here and we're gonna get back to you in about 10 minutes or so. Thanks. Welcome back to the second half of tonight's game. St. Clair Panthers playing the West Mifflin Titans. Uh, the score 28 to nine. Story of the first half really has to be the, the swarming tenacious defense that St. Clair put on the floor. Uh, again, uh, last night against Peters Township, uh, thought they would give the Panthers a little bit more of a game. But the Panthers are sitting here with a 19 point lead uh, to begin the second half. Coach, Coach Holzer has a much different squad this year. He lost seven seniors from last year's last year's team, including all five starters. Uh, McShane and Mindbreeze did get a fair amount of playing time, uh, but it was primarily off the bench. Let's see who he's starting with. He's going with his uh, his starting team: McShane, McLean, Shea, Conwell, and Mindbreeze. And it appears that West Mifflin is going with their same same starting lineups as well. Here we go, start of the second half. 34, Leon Green. Looking to bring it over the half court line. McShane, again, that matchup pressure. West Mifflin has to do a better job of getting some open shots, and they have to get a better job of just getting shots. And here, they start off the, they start the second half with yet another turnover. An air ball that didn't even hit the rim, so I think that's a turnover, not a rebound. I think you'll see the Panthers be patient maybe try to work it inside a more. Conwell, nice left-handed move. Now he is a, a very, very smooth uh, athlete. If you watch him play football, you know, that move, uh, it's, not, it's not as quick as, say, a, a Pat or McLean, but he gets by it, and the next thing you know, he's in there for a layup, even though he doesn't appear to be very fast. Again, West Mifflin just seems to be trying to penetrate one man one-on-one uh, -on -one and then kick the ball back out. Again, they didn't even, uh, <laughs> no, no iron on that shot. McShane sees it, oh. He saw, he saw an opening, darted down the key, and then tried to kick it back out to his favorite three-point shooter, Shea, but it was just a little too high and a little too hot. West Mifflin ball. Bring the ball up court. Again, McShane out to apply some pressure, just to disrupt their offense a little bit. Working the ball around the perimeter. Little head fake, back over to the top of the key. Gets past McLean. McShane almost with the steal. Conwell's there. Here's the break. Conwell, nice no-look pass. 
Shea hangs off the back of the rim. Here comes West Mifflin. Semi-fast break. Goes up, West Mifflin player goes up strong and is then fouled. It's like number 20. Mike Rue is going to go to the line. No, Mike Rue is not number 20. My, uh, my, uh, my roster is incorrect. Let's see who this is. Uh, and the PA announcer doesn't know who it is either because our, uh, our rosters haven't been updated. Well, it's not Mike Rue. 32 is Mike Rue, so he's, he's wrong as well. At any rate, the significant snippets of that play was that Mindbreast picked up his third foul, but it looks like Coach Holzer is going to load him in there. Ball rattles out. McShane brings the ball up court. West Mifflin stays in their man. Panthers spreading it out. Trying to get let, let, let McShane go one-on-one -on, -one on his man. Beat his man off the dribble and then dish. Oh, that was a walk. Picked up his dribble a little too early and some nice defense by West Mifflin. Uh, McShane applying the pressure in the backcourt this time. Yeah, it's kind of what Coach Holzer did last year with, with Cam Griffin, where Cam would apply that pressure in the backcourt just to, just to annoy the other, point, other team's point guard. West Mifflin tries a three-pointer off the, off the in, inside rim. Mindbridge with the rebound. Now, Mindbridge tried to penetrate again. The ball was taken away from him again. West Mifflin on the break. Brings it back out. Starts over. Three-pointer off the side rim. Rebound Shea over to McShane, over to Conwell. Conwell lays it in over the front rim with his left hand. Now again, here's your five man running the court like a point guard. Uh, 5.14 to go in the half. Panthers have extended their lead to 23 points, 32-9. Three-pointer, no good. Re rebound mind breast. McShane brings the ball up court. Into the corner to Shea. Shea looks to Conwell. Decides better, kicks it back out to McShane. McShane over to McLean. McLean in the corner to Mindbreeze. Dave thinks about shooting, then gives it up to Christian. Christian had a thought about getting into Conwell. Conwell jostling for position with, uh, with Mike Rue. Conwell, nice fake. Up and in. 34-9. Extends the Panther lead to 25. Biggest lead of the night. If you can hear the uh, fans in the background chanting single digits. Uh, again, the West Mifflin player was just a little over anxious, tried to make his cut uh, before he started his dribble and his call for traveling. Got a couple of substitutions. Shea and McLean are sitting down. Adam Anderson checks in, as does, we need one more player. Ah, we've got uh, Tom Poloshenko over on the other side. And we had the, uh, the middle linebacker, number 55, Cordero Nesby. I love that name, Cordero Nesby. McShane from the side, three, oh, rattles in. 37-9, 28-point lead for the Panthers. West Mifflin working the ball around the perimeter. They'll settle for just, a, just a, anything right now, whether it's a layup, a three-pointer. Their offense is just completely out of sync with the St. Clair defense. Throws up a three, rebound mind brace. Fast break into Addison. Anderson can't find the handle. Conwell picks it up, kicks it back out. McShane beats his man, goes in for the layup. And as they would say, the route is on. 39 to nine, 30 point lead for St. Clair. Clock winding to 324 in the third quarter. Now, Again, there's that little shuffle. Whoa, well, no, it wasn't a shuffle. I thought he was calling uh, West Mifflin for a walk, but apparently there was a, a random phantom shove from someone on the, uh, on the Panther team. Adam with a look of disbelief on his face because he was nowhere near the play. West Mifflin, a uh, couple of players checking in for West Mifflin. That's a second team foul this half for the Panthers. Oddly enough, West Mifflin hasn't committed any. Maybe if they played a little more defense, they might. Uh, 
they hit the cutting man on the inbounds pass. Uh, he missed the layup, but he was fouled. Go to the line to shoot two. Who do we have? Is this uh, Shea picked up his third personal foul? Uh, Mike, correction, his second, Shea's second, team's third. Uh, that ends quite a dry spell for West Mifflin. They've gone the last five minutes without a point. Uh, that cuts the lead to 39-10, cuts it to a, down to a 29-point lead. Second one up, hits the side iron, rolls through. 39-11, 3-15. Mind breeze with the jumper. Again, there's, there's Anderson, once again, Anderson around the ball, you know, crashing the boards, uh, literally crashing into the floor as he fought for that loose ball. But he got his hands on it, kept it alive, and it was eventually off West Mifflin player. Shea looks to inbound over to Mindbreeze. Mindbreeze under pressure, gives it up to Conwell. Conwell with the 18-footer, back rim, rebound West Mifflin. Here come the Titans. 39-11, 28-point lead for St. Clair, comfortably ahead. 2.50 to go in the half, or in the quarter, excuse me. And working the ball around the perimeter. Tries to back in on Mindbreeze. Decides the better. Drive, jumper is good from 12 feet. Chris Giles with his first points of the night. Mindbreeze, foot was on the line. No, 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 it was a two. His foot was on the line. One, one official gave him a three, but, but me and the other official decided no, it was only a two. 42-10, I think his toenail was on the, uh, the three-point line. West Mifflin player imploring his teammates to come down and help him inbound the ball. Hands on his knees, he looks a little gassed at this point. 41-13, St. Clair comfortably in the lead with 2.30 to go in the third quarter. Uh, while we were looking the other way, Taylor Everett checked back in, as did J.T. Pion. This is a lineup we haven't seen in before. See if West Mifflin can uh, do a little bit better trying to make some penetration against against the seven, eight, and nine men. Thirty-four rebound, rebound Taylor. Nice job, Taylor. Fast break over to over to Paul Shaco. Paul Shaco cross court pass to Pion. Shea settles things down. Taylor in the corner. Taylor Everett, another Panther that made the transition from football to basketball in the last month. All conference cornerback. Paul Shaco with that nice lefty stroke, rolls around, bounces out, West Mifflin controls the ball. A long pass, an ill-advised pass uh, by West Mifflin, and after having the ball for 1.4 seconds, they turn it back over to St. Clair. Now, now that's, that's a good case in point, you know, where they really need to do a better job. And I understand you need to push it up, you know, try to get some points when you're behind, but Geez, just uh, you know, hold on to the ball for a little bit. Uh, we have number 11 uh, checked in for the for St. Clair, Dan Simpson. He's a sophomore. Um, this is, I think he got a couple seconds in last night. Dan's a real nice point guard that did a great job in summer ball and in on uh, the freshman team last year. Pass into Everett. Everett drives the lane. Is fouled. That, that shot was after the whistle. He's going to go to the line to, with with two shots. Uh, foul was on Cordero Nesby. First, first free throw by Everett, rattles around and drops. Extending this Panther lead back out to 29 points. Second, nothing but the bottom of the net. 43-13, 30-point Panther lead, minute 16 to go in the quarter. Mindbreeze is checked back in. Three-pointer, he's not afraid to shoot. Mindbreeze scrambles over to the corner, gets the rebound. Here come the Panthers. Simpson looks to drive, passes it back out to Mindbreeze. Let's set up, let's set up the motion offense. Pion in the corner, tied up. Mindbreeze over to Simpson. Simpson makes a nice drive. Lays it in. Very nice pass. A nice cut by Simpson. Nice look over his back shoulder by Steve Mindbreeze. 
45 13, 41 seconds to go in the quarter. West Mifflin again working, working the ball around the perimeter, trying to find an open man, trying to find a passing lane. They just can't. St. Clair has every lane choked off. Nice help by Taylor. Nice drive. Well, we had some contact. Which way is it going to go? It looks like we're walking St. Clair way, so I think we're going to call an offensive foul. Very nice job by J.T. Pion to step in front and, and, and take that offensive foul. 19 seconds to go. I think we'll see St. Clair settle for the last shot. Simpson over to Everett. Everett back to Paul Shako. Paul Shako looking to dribble to his right. Simpson, Simpson, nice little use of the left hand, gets tied up, loses the ball. Two seconds. Oh, I'm not so sure about that one. Uh, Tom Polshenko got back on that very nicely, cut off the, uh, the lane so that West Mifflin couldn't go in uncontested to the basket. I thought he had all ball, but once again, the men with the black and white shirts make the call. And with one-tenth of a second, one-tenth of a second left in the third quarter, West Mifflin a chance to uh, cut into the lead. Back rim, rebound off to Simpson, and that'll put the third quarter into the Bucks. Again, 45-14, St. Clair with a 31-point lead going into the fourth quarter. I think you'll see uh, you'll see Coach Holzer start to do uh, you know, do a little bit more substituting, get some of his uh, you know some of his younger players in. He started doing that a little bit in that quarter. Uh, I think you'll see him going to his bench a little bit deeper. Nice, nice little, nice little bit of experience. Uh, get some varsity playing time for some of his sophomores and and, and juniors that are usually, uh, you know, usually in the JV games or on the bench. Cheerleaders doing some uh, some stunts for us here in between the third and fourth quarters. Let's see how Coach Hol Holzer sets his lineup here for the third quarter. Looks like he's going to go back to his starting lineup for at least uh, a few minutes. McShane, McLean, Dane, Mindbrees, and Chris Shea, the freshman. And it looks like Wes Mifflin is going back to their starting lineup as well. They'll have Leon Green, Chris Giles, Chris Pasternak, Ray Saunders and and Mike Grew back in there to start the start the third quarter or start the fourth quarter. I think you'll see a, a St. Clair team that'll be patient on offense, but if they see an opening, I, I, they'll they'll go for it. But they won't be you won't see them forcing the ball in. Mindbreach trying jostling for position. West Mifflin takes a chance on uh, on a steal, and I think we'll have a foul on 20 Mike Grew. And uh, that's only the fourth team foul, so it'll just be side out for St. Clair. McLean putting the ball, putting the ball in. Over to Mindbreeze in the corner. Goes baseline. Reverse layup. Fights for his own rebound. And in a little bit of frustration after that bad shot, uh, I think Mindbreeze has just picked up his fourth foul. With the game not in doubt or in any danger, I think he's just going to uh, leave Mindbrest in. West Mifflin working the ball again on the outside, looking for looking to generate some kind of offense. And it'll be timeout, West Mifflin. Not sure. Uh, with 7:23 to go in the fourth quarter, West Mifflin calls timeout. Not sure what he's going to tell them now that he didn't tell them in between quarters. Not much could have transpired in the last 37 seconds. Uh, can't imagine any stroke of genius, any stroke of coaching genius may pop up. But who knows? Maybe he'll have a strategy to cut into this 31-point lead. Yeah. 
That was a, there's a 30 second timeout. The West Mifflin players getting back on the court. And when they get back, it'll be uh, West Mifflin ball side out in front of the scorer's table. Over to 23, Chris Giles as he sets up the offense, comes across the half court line. Back over to Leon Green. McShane matching up on Green. Looks like West Mifflin just wants to run some clock here and you know, get out of here with uh, get out of here as fast as they can. Three pointer from the corner. Giles gets his own rebound. Green with the three. That won't go. Giles with the rebound. Green drives, dishes into the corner to Saunders. Saunders, that won't go. Uh, they are certainly throwing up some bricks. Shea. Ah, uh, very nice play by Chris. Uh, he hung on that jumper until he was open. Made the jumper, drew the foul. 47-14, St. Clair. McShane pushed the ball up, got the ball over to, over to Christian. Free throw is good, 48-14. Clock at 6.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Giles in the corner to Saunders. Saunders back out to Giles, over to Green. They're working it around and seem content with these perimeter passes, but you know they're not getting much out of it. Last time down, they took up, took three threes, and they take another three, back rim, they're getting those long rebounds. If they're content to take the threes, St. Clair is content to let them shoot them. At this point, they've given us no indication that they can make anything. Another three, back rim, mine breast rebound. Now there's really no need for passes like that with a 34 point lead with six to go in the, in the quarter. Uh, they saw an opening, decided to take it, but really they should be slowing the ball down and just, and just taking some clock out. West Mifflin, want to bet they're going to take a three pointer? No. They work it inside. Mine breast comes over. Rejection. Ball out off of St. Clair. Nice help by Minebreast sliding over to, to pick up Saunders after he had cut across the lane. And Coach Holzer takes out his entire starting lineup, substitute five fresh players. We've got Everett, Anderson, Simpson, Pion, and Polasheko in. Yet another jumper that's off the front rim. Anderson in the corner. Simpson over to Everett. I think you'll see a patient St. Clair team on this possession. You know, these guys are hungry for some playing time, but they're not going to take bad shots. Pion over to Paul Shanko. Clock winds to 518. St. Clair sitting on a 48-14 lead. I think Coach Holzer happier tonight with his defensive effort. Everett, the bank is open for Taylor Everett. I'm not sure he called that one, and horse that wouldn't count, but in basketball, it's, it's in a regular game, it's okay. 50-14, 36-point lead, clock just under five minutes. West Miffle with yet another three, and they finally drain one. Giles hits a three-pointer from the side. Paul Shanko into Pion. Pion muscles his way in. Side rim, backboard, and rolls in. J.T. Pion, his first points of the night, tucks his shirt in as he comes back down court. 52-17, St. Clair. 18-footer, off the back rim. Anderson, rebound. Dribbles out, gives it over to Simpson. A couple players for West Memphis looking to check in in the next stoppage of play. Anderson, beyond the three-point arc. Over to Everett, Everett over to Pion. Pion from three-point range. No, his foot was on the line. 54-17, Panther lead, back up to 37. Just under four minutes to go. Number 34, Leon Green, nice dribble drive. Beats the St. Clair defense down court. Everett from the corner. Well, I think that, you know, I don't think Colch Holzer wants some shooting in, in the first four seconds that we have the ball. 34 drives lane, kicks it back out. 
Oh, head fake gets by Anderson, goes baseline. 54-21, 33-point lead. Pion drives, shot rejected. Looks like there was a little contact with the body, but there was a no call. We've got some more uh, substitutes checking in for St. Clair. We've got Paul Schenko and Anderson going to the bench, being replaced by number 44, uh, Jason Falls, a junior. And who else came in number five? Uh, Shane Brennan. Shane Brennan pushing for some... Uh, for some for rebounding position. That time got away with a bit of a push, but if they don't call it, I guess it wasn't a foul. Brandon gets the rebound over to Everett. He's gonna get the ball in a Simpsons hand here, hands. Beats his man, drives down the lane, stop, jump, back rim, no good. Rebound, West Mifflin. J.R. Johnson with the ball over to Nosby. Uh, 44 loses the handle, he just checked in Matt Bruno. Looks like another football player. Uh, Pion throws the ball away in the backcourt. A little sloppy. Easy basket for West Mifflin. Cuts the lead to 31 with 2.35 to go in the, in the game. Simpson seeing some pressure. Everett takes a three. Front rim, no good. Ball bounces around, rebound West Mifflin. Semi-fast break. Three-pointer. Oh, hits the back rim, no good. Rebound West Mifflin, and it looks as though he was fouled on the rebound. I think number 44, Matt Bruno, is going to go to the line. He'll get two. That's the sixth team foul for St. Clair. Uh, first on first personal foul on uh, JT Pion. First shot up, good. Number 10, Dustin Dean checks in for, for West Mifflin. Get a couple of minutes in of, uh, of mop-up time. That's his first appearance of the evening. He's a 5'8 senior guard. Back of the rim, ball bounces around. Everett controls it. Simpson in the corner. Long rebound over to False. False gives the ball to Pion. Pion back out, out to the top of the key to Shane. Shane, ooh. Another uh, football playing Panther, quarterback, got some varsity time, threw a few touchdown passes in the JV level also. Yet another three-pointer off the backboard. Uh, that's gotta be a walk when you go down on the ground, but I guess not, and it's gonna be a foul on St. Clair. Play getting a little sloppy here in the waning moments of this game. Got a minute 45 to go. Matt Bruno going to the line again. We'll see if he gets, uh, if he does any better than his last trip. Last trip down, he was one for two, made the first, missed the second. That's going to be short. Front rim bounces around. And number 42 for West Mifflin checks in. Matt Babjack. Bruno, second shot. 30 point lead, St. Clair. Nice stroke by Matt. He's one for two again. Simpson brings the ball down over to the corner. Back to Simpson. He takes an 18 footer, side rim. Players scrambling for the ball. West Mifflin picks up the ball off the ground. Here come the Titans. Well, Demetrius Snow seemed a little confused on what to do. I don't think he's usually out there with the point guard. Ball bounced around off of St. Clair foot. Minute 26 to go. West Mifflin will be inbounding underneath their basket. Everett came up with the ball. St. Clair couldn't get it to fall. Some racehorse basketball right now. Subs from both teams in and false with the lefty jumper. Yes. Side rim it bounds in. That brings a, a brings a big roar of approval from the student section. I think those are Jason's first points of the evening. Making the score 56-25 St. Clair with 50 seconds to go. Everett doing a nice job. Tying that's got to be five. Oh, they're calling a foul on Taylor. Uh, it looked like they were just about to make a five-second call. Uh, number 52, Brandon Stevens, didn't know what to do with the ball. But there was some contact. And we'll go to the one 
Eighth team foul, we're shooting one and one. Now, uh, when you shoot an air ball, Simpson over to false, lefty stroke from the corner. Didn't draw iron. It'll be West Mifflin ball. 40 seconds to go. Everett, loose ball, jump, possession arrow, West Mifflin. So with 25 seconds to go, West Mifflin will be inbounding ball from underneath their own basket. Brandon Stevens will be putting the ball in. Bruno tried to cut, picked off by Brandon, and laid, oh, it looked like JT was hit as he went up but the ball slid off the back rim. That's one way to beat a double team. Go through a couple guys. Everett gets the rebound. Nice bounce pass. And with 6.6 .6 seconds to go in the game, Shane Brennan is fouled. He'll get a couple of free throws here. See if he can get into the, into the stat, get some lines on the, and get some points on the uh, board and make the uh, statistics page. First free throw, back rim. Little too strong. 6.6 .6 seconds to go. I think this one, we can safely say, is in the books for the Panthers. Take them to 2-0 and crown them the champions of their tip-off, of our tip-off classic. Bruno, Bruno had a nice fourth quarter. He might be the leading scorer for the uh, Titans. Thanks for watching tonight. Uh, final score, St. Clair 57, West Mifflin 27. And that'll be all. This is Hank Chesko uh, working solo for the first time tonight. And that's it from Pantherland, as Coach Holzer likes to call it. Good night.